All right, welcome back to the iOS Dev Channel. My name is Max, and this is Max Codes. Now, in this video series, we've been building out a linked list in Swift, Playgrounds, and if you're interested in starting from the beginning, go ahead and check out the playlist the playlist link in the description where you can start from the very first video where I actually explain what a linked list is and we go from there. If you want to start at this video, you can always get the source code at the GitHub link in the description and go from there. But again, I highly recommend that you start from video one and just kind of cruise through these quick and easy videos. Okay, now if you're new here, leave a like and subscribe and let's get started. All right, so in the last video, what we did was we learned how to print out our list elements, okay? So now when we hit play, we should be able to see the contents of our list whenever we print them, right? And that works great. And we did that with this set of code right here in this public variable. Now that we have this set up, we are ready to fetch nodes at a given index. So let's write a function in this video where we can fetch nodes at a given index and print the value to the user. Okay, so what we're gonna have to do is go to our application here right below append and let's introduce a new function called public func node and we'll say at index index. This is just a label, but the parameter name for use within the function is index. If we just did that, then that would be the label and the parameter. We're gonna do this though. Okay, next thing we'll do is mark it with an integer and then we will give it a return type of node. Okay, because we wanna return the node to the user because we could potentially use this function within our node linked list class, which we might do in future videos. Okay, so there's two conditions here. If index is zero, then it is the very first node in our list. So we just wanna return the head. So we'll say return head. And instead of unwrapping it, or instead of, yeah, guard unwrapping it, I'm just gonna force unwrap it because we need to return a node at least, right? Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is say else, and we will say var node is equal to head dot next. So this is just in case it's not the zeroth element and the user put in something like one or two and we wanna get a different node, then we kinda of have to traverse down the list. Well, how do we do this? Well, we wanna just say for underscore in one, so we wanna start at one because we already are at the first node we're gonna to go to the index length, okay? So as far as the user has kind of requested. And what we're gonna do is say node is equal to node.next to get to that next node. And if the node is equal to nil, we're just gonna break out of it and then we'll finally return the node. So what's going on here is we're simply iterating over it to the index that the user has specified. So if this is two, this is gonna run one time. If it's three, it's gonna run three times and so forth. And then it's just gonna keep replacing the node with the next node value until we get to the last, until we get to that specified node and then it's gonna return the node. And then if the node is nil, so if it's at the fifth position but we only have four or three items in the array, then the node is eventually gonna be nil, right? because it's gonna set node equal to node.next on the last node, which is obviously gonna be nil if it's the fifth item and it's that doesn't even exist, right? So in that case, it's just gonna break and return that last node, okay? Which potentially is gonna be nil. Okay, so let's go ahead and give it a shot. We'll say list.node at index and we'll say two. Okay, I'm also gonna say list.node at index one and list.node at index zero, and we'll try one out of bounds. We'll say list at node index 10. Okay, let's go ahead and compile this, and we should see some results on the right side of the screen. And I'm gonna put a little return here. You'll see we get a nil, okay? It says unexpectedly found nil while unwrapping an app optional value because we tried to get to that node.next and it broke and it tried to return a nil node, okay? So what we're gonna do is comment out that one because that was totally expected and we're going to continue playing it and you'll see that we have values for two, one, and zero. But you'll see that it's just the node itself and the value is within it, okay? So how can we get that value out? Well, we can simply just say dot value because if you remembered this function, we set it to return an actual node. So when we say dot value, what we're doing is we're simply just getting the value out of the node that it has returned. Okay, next thing we'll do is say dot value on this last one and we will continue and we should see some values here on the screen. Okay, you'll see we have another one 
ASDF and maxcodes.io. And I'm just gonna put slash courses on this URL now just because that's where my courses are located. Okay, perfect. So that is how you fetch a node at a specific index and potentially in a future video, I'll show you how to subscript where we can simply just say at zero. Now, if you already know how to do this, feel free to write an implementation and let me know in the comments what your implementation is and I can update the source code with your implementation and potentially make a video on it. So that would be greatly appreciated. And if you put that there, I'll let you know if I put it in the repo and I'll update the repo. Maybe you can maybe you can submit a pull request or something to that repo and I'll allow I'll merge in your your uh, code. So I actually kind of want to do that. If the update's not already in the repo where you can do this, I challenge you to write up a solution and submit a pull request and I'll merge it in if somebody hasn't already done it, okay? So that way you can get a little bit more GitHub experience and experience working on a team project. And yeah, that'd be great. Just off the top of my head, thought that might be a good idea. Okay, so that is it for this video. What we are gonna be doing in the very next video is we are going to be learning how to insert nodes at a specific index. So instead of saying list.node at index zero, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna implement the ability to say list.insert and put a node maybe at the first value and put it right before ASDF or something like that. Okay, so I'll show you how to do that in the next video that I'll upload tomorrow or the next day that uh, another video comes out. And yeah, if you like this video, if you like this series, please leave a like, subscribe, and drop a comment. And uh, yeah, I'll just keep uploading videos for you. I'll see you in the very next video. Catch you next time.